I'm Peter Campbell. I'm the designer and editor of the Southern Highlands Arts File website, which is becoming a portal to all things arts, culture and design in the Southern Highlands. This is a quick video to give you some photographic guidelines as to how to produce um, higher quality and more professional looking photographs of your work if they're going to be used on the site, for example, on the Arts Trail um, coming up later in the year or in a dedicated uh, arts profile on your work at some stage. I'm going to move through it pretty quickly. It's quite simple to produce good looking photographs off a smartphone or a simple digital camera. And um, there are just a few things that you can do to make sure we have high, um, a, a fairly large file, it's framed properly, and uh, it doesn't have distracting elements in it. Have a look at this, and I hope it'll be of some use to you as you prepare your work for, our, um, for display. Thanks very much. When you visit artsfile.com.au, you find a site that represents literature, music, visual arts, performing arts, creative industries in the Highlands. And if you're a visual artist and you're on the um, arts trail, you get a dedicated page, something like this, and you can fit up to five images in that carousel. When you're selecting works to photograph, particularly for the arts trail, we ask that you always choose new works so that uh, there's no repetition from last year. That's a bad look. When you're trying to find a place to actually take the photograph of your work, look for somewhere that's got good light, doesn't cast harsh shadows, and that's easy to get to. I looked at my own place and felt that this corner over by the window might be the best. Um, I had to take a picture down, but if this was my work, which it isn't, um, it's easy to hang, there's plenty of room around it, and it looks good. When you're taking the shot, make sure you get the whole image, don't crop it off in the photograph, and don't take it from an angle so that it distorts your, your picture. Just make it so that it's right in the centre of the frame and filling about 80% of the frame so that it looks comfortable. When it comes to objects such as sculpture or ceramics or textiles, um, need to be treated a little bit differently. They often have to be put on a, some kind of table or plinth. Make sure that uh, it's not got distracting objects or mess around it so that we get a clean view of your object. Uh, make sure the object itself is in focus, obviously, and fills about 80% of the frame. It's best to use soft natural light rather than desk lamp or flash to light your work because those light sources can distort the colour and cause nasty shadows. One thing it would be good to consider would be getting a small tripod, uh, which will stop there being any blurring of your artwork. If you follow these simple rules, your photographs will look as good as they can without more in-depth training. The last important thing to say about taking the photographs is that we need image files that are at least two megabytes up to 10 megabytes so that they work on both the web and in print. So for this reason, files under two megabytes aren't accepted. So before you take your photographs, you should check that your camera or phone is set to capture the images at high quality. You can really help us by giving each image a name that makes sense. Say a fictional artist called Jane Smith sent us this collection of 15 beautiful images. But you can see with names like these, we've got no idea who painted them, what their titles were or how many there were in the upload. Here I've renamed the images using a simple logical code that gives the artist's initials, the title of the work and a number. This is precisely what we need to track your images. The last point I want to make is about sending us images by email. Most email programs automatically reduce the size of attachments to make the transfer quicker and easier for them. This screen is from a Mac using its mail program. In the top right corner of the window is a drop down box that allows you to select small, medium, large or actual size. Always select actual size when you're sending images for web or print. 
This screen is from a PC using the Outlook Mail program. Unfortunately, it's not as easy to check what the system is set to do as it is on a Mac, but you still can do it. First, load your attachment, then click File in the top left corner of the window, and it'll take you to the Image Attachments screen. There are two options uh, you can see there. One is Resize Images when I send this message, and the other is Do Not Resize Images. Make sure Do Not Resize Images is checked so that when you send them, we get them at the original size. On this page, you can also uh, check the properties section at the bottom of the screen, and that will tell you what the size of the file actually is in megabytes. So I hope that's been of some use to you. Um, on the website, you can download a PDF which runs through these things in, not in quite such visual detail, but it could be of additional help. So good luck and we hope to see you on Arts File sometime soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.